Hello bitches, welcome back to another draw with me. Today we are finally resuming back to our original programming and drawing in the sketchbook. However, there's still gonna be a slight difference and that is today we're going to be drawing a mind map of the best advice that I got from art school, specifically Cal Arts because that's where I went to school. And ironically, that is not where I learned how to do mind maps. I actually learned that from my high school English teacher, so shout out to Mr. Weinstein if you are watching this video. But moving on, I wanted to talk about the best advice that I got while I was attending CalArts for its character animation program. I was at CalArts between 2014 to 2018, so it's already been a few years since I graduated, but these are pieces of advice that I still follow to this day even as a working professional. I still feel really weird calling myself a professional, but more specifically, I am I am an assistant episodic director currently working at Tonko House on a series called Oni that will soon be on a Netflix near you. Anyway, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the best advice that I got from professors, guest lecturers, and my personal experience from attending CalArts, aka California Institute of the Arts, where I attended its character animation program. I specifically started narrowing down to become a story artist, which hence led me to becoming an assistant episodic director. And I also wanted to make it known that I am aware that not everybody has the ability to go to Cal Arts, whether if it's for financial reasons or other personal reasons. So I'm very aware that being able to go there is an extreme privilege to have. So please check out one of my videos, should you go to art school slash Cal Arts, listed up here on the top right where I discuss whether if attending art school is financially worth it and maybe if these alternative online options might be more worth it to you. Anyway, to do a quick rundown of the top advice I got from art school, the first one is that clarity is key. I got this one from my first year story teacher who now directed one of the top animated films on Netflix. So I'll let you guys guess what that is. And second is get what's in your head out onto paper. Third, when it comes to your portfolio, emphasize your strengths, not your weaknesses. Think about your skills first and then your style second. And lastly, know to separate your inspiration from your aspiration. So I apologize if some of this advice seems a little bit vague because this is kind of more of a mindset approach towards your art for the long-term growth rather than how to fix something technical right now in your drawing. So these are kind of the pieces of advice that have stuck with me and I never really noticed it until a few years into the future. Now I look back and I'm just like, wow, Wow, that piece of advice really helped me. So this is more directed towards your long-term growth and mindset as an artist rather than just how to fix a drawing mistake right now. So the first piece of advice is clarity is key. And for those of you who don't know what this might mean, it basically means that before you worry about the appeal or the look of your story, drawing, project, film, whatever it is that you're making, Make sure that it's understandable or clear and that your intentions behind each stroke or scene or shot of your project is understandable to someone. Like when someone watches it, do they know what is happening? If not, that is something that you should kind of focus on first before you focus on the details and the nitty gritty of it. Make sure that your audience can understand what the hell it is that they're looking at. And I know that to some people, this might seem limiting in creativity because you might not want to make something that is so easily obvious and you know for sure that is not the case for everything but I think overall when it comes to wanting to have an audience or people to actually watch your work or look at your work and if you want them to understand what is going on then you should definitely focus on making sure your intentions behind the work is clear and what that means for maybe a drawing is that if you're trying to draw a person in a specific pose, make sure that their arms are overlapping the bodies in the right ways or something like that. Like try to avoid tangents if you can. And for stories, make sure that each 
shot that you're drawing or each scene or panel that you're drawing in a comic aligns with the point that you're trying to make. Like, do the drawings make sense with what you're trying to say? If you're still struggling on learning how to make your work clear, Skillshare may be able to help you with that. So for those of you who are seeking an online alternative to art school, Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of classes for creative people from animation, film and video, illustration, and more. So if you are a person who is looking for either a new hobby or you just wanna develop a new skill, Skillshare is the place where you can go to to pick up a new passion or hobby. There's a class called Storytelling in Film Using Cinematography to Convey Emotion taught by Joe Simon that can easily apply to art and animation. So I will talk about this class more towards the end of this video, so stick around if you want to learn more about this class. Moving on to the second piece of advice, it is get what's in your head out onto paper. This is another piece of advice from another story teacher that I had at CalArts, and I feel like this is one of the most crucial ones that can apply to any artist who is struggling to get anything out of their head onto paper. I feel like this one is a pretty important one because I know a lot of artists who either face art block or analyzation paralysis and they just really don't draw anything at all, but this ends up doing more damage than good in my opinion because if you don't see it, then you don't know if what you're working on is going to work out or not. I think it's just better to accept that at the end of the day, there's always going to be a problem you can find with your work or there's always something that you can improve on. It's just gonna be the mindset of an artist. You're always gonna be critical about your work, but what's gonna make it even worse is if you're withholding yourself from finding more solutions just because you're afraid to put down that first line. So think of it that way, where if you're not laying down that line, you're really preventing yourself from seeking solutions from problems that are already just going to be there regardless. So the sooner that you lay down the line, the sooner you can pick out these problems in your work, and the sooner you can improve if you just face them immediately rather than just procrastinate on discovering them. It's always better to be rough at first and have something to work on and refine later on. So the third piece of advice is when it comes to your portfolio, emphasize your strengths and don't include your weaknesses. Now, this might seem a little bit counterintuitive because I've mentioned before in the past to diversify your skill and show a range of your work, which is true to an extent, because I feel like there's always an extremity that you should not really surpass when it comes to things like this, because if you show too much of your range and skill, maybe you might've showcased things that are not necessarily your strengths, Maybe they might be things that you haven't put in as much effort on, or it might be something that you're not even as interested in, which will really pigeonhole you into potentially putting being put into work for something that you don't like. For example, if you're just going to be drawing dinosaurs in your portfolio just for the sake of showing people that, hey, I can draw dinosaurs, but they're not necessarily the best thing that you can draw and they're not necessarily your most favorite thing to draw, well, what if there's a project that's about dinosaurs that ends up seeing your portfolio and they fucking love your work and they're like hey want to hop onto our project and they're the only project that ever asks you for work and you might be potentially stuck on this project that you don't love the most so that's just a thing to be aware about another thing is that if dinosaurs aren't necessarily your strengths and you kind of struggle to draw dinosaurs well you might be put on a show that you're going to continue to either struggle on drawing or you're just going to get better at drawing something that you don't really care about so to add onto that idea of emphasizing your strengths in a portfolio, not only do you need to focus on your strengths on a skill level, but also focus on your strengths on a love level and know that whatever you're putting into your portfolio should represent what it is that you actually like, care about, because that could be the show that you're working on in the future. So the fourth piece of advice I have for anyone struggling to find their style is to focus on your skill first and your style second. I feel like this one might be a little bit debatable or controversial because some people might learn the other way around where they find a style first, then learn how to draw through that. And that is totally fine. I am just presenting an option for those who are currently struggling to find their style. So this is not like a hard set rule. This is kind of just more of a guide 
guide for those who are currently struggling to find their style. So I was also someone who struggled to really find a style throughout my time in art school. So instead of focusing on my style, I decided to just focus on developing my skills first. And what happens is when you focus on skills and really learning about the foundations and going back to the basics of drawing art or design or animating or whatever is you kind of find your style through that and your style kind of comes through your approach or your perspective of how to develop your skills. So in summary, I guess your style will come based on either how you decide you want to follow rules or how you want to break rules when it comes to art. Another thing I would like to mention is that after working in the industry, I noticed that people tend to seem to care more about your understanding of a certain skill rather than a style because first of all, just remember that when it comes to getting assigned onto a project, you won't even be able to really draw in your style, you might be drawing in somebody else's. So the last piece of advice is knowing when to separate inspirational from aspirational. And you might be wondering what the difference is because I see a lot of people who use these words interchangeably, but once you learn the difference, I feel like it will be a more helpful guide as to where you want to go in the future with your work. So for things that you don't like, it's important to analyze why other people might like it because you can learn a lot from the things that you personally are not interested in or or used to and for things that you find inspirational these are things that you might find interest in but you don't necessarily want to make that exact same final product aspirational however is something that you find interest in and you actually do want to make something or be something like what you just saw so aspirational kind of comes with more with the factor that you want to actually be that or you want to actually make that existent is something that exists and that's the only thing that it will mean to you if it's something that you don't like you know not to go into that direction and then lastly there's just garbage and trash so so that just kind of means you know when something is not helpful or beneficial to your work. So instead of just not going in that direction, you avoid that direction. Anyway, those are the best pieces of advice that I got from my personal experience going to Cal Arts. I know that every artist is going to have a different preference just based on what type of artist you are. So if you have any personal tips, tricks, or pieces of advice that you got from your school, your online class, or just your personal experience in general, please share in the comments below so that other artists can learn more from all of us. You can also learn more on skills Share where there's a class taught by Joe Simon on storytelling in film, using cinematography to convey emotion. Despite the fact that I come from a more story, animation, art background, I still heavily rely on the basics of film cinematography for animation, storyboarding, and directing. Everything that we ended up learning in art school, for me as an animator, always just rooted back to filmmaking, specifically more than just visual art. So if you're new to film, animation, or any form of visual storytelling, this class can help you convey your ideas, emotions in a clear way by teaching you different styles of framing, composition, lighting, camera movement, and just some technical specs on cameras if you want to shoot in live action. So check out Joe's class if you have been wanting to learn more about how to effectively communicate your ideas into a film, short, or any project. Another great thing about Skillshare is that there are no ads and new premium classes always launching so with an annual subscription this is all less than ten dollars a month which is way more affordable than art school so if you're interested in learning more check out the link in the description box below where the first 1000 of my subscribers to click that link will get a free trial of skillshare Actually, after working on this whole mind map, I was reminded as to why I no longer really like drawing in pencil is because of all this freaking eraser dust. So that's another pro to being able to just draw directly in pen is you won't really have to ever deal with eraser dust ever again. But like drawing this mind map was just a little eraser dust hellhole for me. So yeah, you'll see me brushing all this stuff around. So yeah. Anyway, thank you again for watching this video and I will see you all in the next one. So peace out and stay wholesome, bitches.